Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExecuteAutomation.com and welcome to part 27 of our C Sharp for Automation Testing video series. And in this video, I'll be talking about C Sharp 7 new features and this feature we're going to talk about is tuples. So again, before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 26 since this part is going to be a continuation of that part because we're going to use that particular project which we were working in our previous part. All right, so let's get started. Tuples in C Sharp 7. Well, what is tuples and why are we really going for tuples? In a very short sentence to say, tuples are the way to return multiple return values from a method. And this was one of the most important feature which any person on the earth will ever require to return multiple value, not just returning one simple value from a method. But if you think, do we really have this kind of feature before in C Sharp? like C sharp 6 or C sharp 5? Of course, yes, we had an option of doing that, but that was a less optimal option, something like using an out parameters, which we saw in our previous video, where we were using the T result of out type in the function delegates. It's pretty much like that, so out parameters. And then there is something called as tuples class, and there is anonymous types written through a dynamic return value. So these are the other options that we were having before the uh, introduction of tuples in C Sharp 7, but these are not very optimal and these are like uh, the third option, the anonymous type written through a dynamic return value is actually very, very performance intensive options and uh, you will be, and your code will be running in a boilerplate. So those are not a very great option, but tuples is really, really optimized. So we are not really going to talk a lot about tuples in theory, rather we're going to jump directly into the code in Visual Studio and we're going to start working from there. And again, there is one more option called tuples deconstruction. And this is one more way of consuming tuples, the, or the tuples method from your code. So we're going to quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to Visual Studio. All right, so this is the same project which we are working in our previous video. And this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work with tuples. And for tuples, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna create a method. So that particular method is gonna sit under our Sharp 7 uh, folder. So there is a new feature. All right, so here I'm gonna create the tuples. So as I said before, the tuples is gonna be uh, something which you're gonna create like a method, but it's gonna return you different return types. Right. So you, if you see this particular method, it's going to return you wide, and even if it's going to return a value of a particular type, it's going to return only one value. So these are the classical way of doing. But using tuples, you can return multiple values. So let's quickly see how the code is going to look like. So basically, the code is going to look something like this. Let's say I'm going to return uh, three values for uh, a student, something like name, age, and grade. Right. So the method is going to look something like this public and name age and grade so name is going to be of string type and age is going to be of integer type and grade is going to be uh, for now this is uh, like string type all right so it's like a return student info uh, right so this is the method that's it and now you can ask me are you really kidding how can this thing work that's what is tuple. So if you hover the mouse here, the compiler actually shows you an error and it says that the predefined type system.value.tuples uh, is not defined or imported. So which means there is an option uh, which is available in Visual Studio. Well, how to fix this particular issue? You're gonna add a NuGet reference, maybe in future that is gonna be added along with the .NET framework, but as of now it is not in .NET framework. So you have to basically go back and search in the NuGet uh, reference to be added. So something like tuples, uh, search. And now you can see there is something called system.tuples. So don't uh, mess up with the system.tuples here. Basically you have to look for what is called as system.valuetuples. So this is something which is provided by Microsoft basically. So you can see that the author is Microsoft. So just go and choose this one. Don't ever go with this one because it's not the one which you're looking for. So I'm gonna choose the system.valuetuples and then I'm gonna install the latest stable version, right? So I'm gonna install that. And as you can see, it is not included in the .NET framework yet. Maybe in future, it is gonna be added. Uh, it's like an entity framework. You're gonna add this one as of now in here, right? All right. So the tuple is added and you can see that the error is gone right now. So the compiler is not complaining us any error. 
And it is also showing us a message that not all code path returns a value. So basically it is expecting us to return some value. So the value which I'm going to return is returning the student's name, age, and its grade. So basically if you're going to return the age, uh, let's make the code much simpler. Let's say I'm going to return the name as uh, Karthik and age as uh, 30. Oops, that's going to be integer and the string of grade is going to be something like a grade right super all right so this is how you can return a tuples value and now if you hover here it says that it's going to turn you the string integer and string again wow that's super cool this is the first time we're going to see something like this all right so now i'm going to access this particular uh, return student info from our program.cs file so i'm going to go over there and then I'm gonna command this particular piece of code, uh, which I'm not gonna really work with right now. So now if I do this, feature dot, you can see we have the student, uh, return student info. I can just call this method. So how to consume this method and how to get the value out from that particular method or the tuples. Basically, it's very, very simple. All you can do is you can use the implicit typed variable, just nothing but var. And let's say I'm gonna get the uh, student info. So st info is equal to this so now if I hover the student info you can see that it has a local variable of string integer and string right now in order to print this particular value you can just do console.write line the student uh, with let's say I'm going to use the C sharp 6 feature which is this string interpolation and I'm going to say student info and what do you expect if I hit a dot here so if I hit dot, do you expect it returns something like name or age or grade? No, it's actually going to return you something like item one, item two, or item three. Basically, this is something like you have not specified what kind of uh, actual parameter it is. Just it's like a plain string intent string, but you basically assumed that the string means its name, the first string its name, the f second int is actually the age, and third int string is actually uh, grade right so you know basically what it is so if you choose like item one it is actually name and then uh, uh, and age oops and age is going to be uh, student info dot item two and then uh, you said the grade as uh, item three right that's what we actually assumed here and we're just passing in uh, the value right so now it seems like it's a very very different way of accessing the particular methods parameter value this is the first time we are actually using this kind of option this is the new feature of c sharp 7 but in a couple of minutes we'll also show how you can actually work with tuples by accessing the value using its name named parameters right so let me quickly run this code and show you what it actually Going to return you the value so whatever we expect it to return the value like the student with with the name like karthik and age 30 and grade a so this is the one which we are expecting and it is returning the value for us and you can see that this is like item one item two and item three it is returning us the value but now if the item one item two and item three is like kind of not really making any sense basically you can go here and you can also give the parameter named here something like string of name and uh, you can say int of age and then st string of uh, grade here you're gonna save it and now if you come here this particular code is still legal you can still say like student info dot item one student info dot item two and student info dot item three but instead of this if you hit dot this time you can see you'll also get something like name and uh, student info dot age and similarly student info dot grade so basically you'll also get the named parameters using this particular uh, tuples if you specify the parameter with its name right so this is the different way of actually working with tuples and you can see like this is so cool that c sharp 7 is actually introducing a much simpler option like tuples where you can return a value and you can work with a value uh, using the tuples that to returning multiple values from the tuples right so in our next videos guys we'll work with the deconstruction of tuples and we'll understand how things work 
So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.